Hi friends and subscribers, and you saw the picture of that beautiful battery bank, right? It was lovely. We built a beautiful shelf for it. You know, they're six volt batteries, so they're kind of heavy. You know, about 50 pounds or so. And we lined all those, those up on, on the bottom shelf, and then we Oh, we lifted up the other ones on that second shelf. Oh, yeah, it was a really sturdy uh, bookshelf type uh, of case for our battery bank. Yeah, yeah. And then we, we put it, uh, a nice piece of plywood on it and closed it in. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it looks great, doesn't it? Saved a lot of space. Mm. Very efficient looking, but really bad design. Ugh. You know what? This is what kills me. No one told me that was a bad design. Uh, it didn't, you know, the solar guy who was up here helping us erect that big pole didn't say anything about it. In fact, we asked him, didn't say, not, not one word. Uh, other people came up, or, oh, didn't say, didn't say one word. Who, who is the expert on designing these battery banks? I don't know. Is there anybody out there? But we certainly lived and learned the hard way because after we figured out we had to make sure we checked our specific gravity. No one told us that either. We, re we read about it in our research, but we didn't know we should have been checking it a lot, not just maybe once every six months. So when we first went to check our specific gravity and check the water level, yeah, we were in for a rude awakening. Uh, not only was the specific gravity off and the battery level was low, but trying to get in those batteries and checking them with that shelf method, terrible, terrible, people, terrible. So, uh, to make a long story short, <laughs> Solar 101, here's another tutorial that um, you're going to see a lot of these through the winter. We are going to share our misfortune, our mishaps, and what not to do. And the first thing we're going to talk about is that battery bank. When you go off grid and you decide to have solar or wind, you got to sit down and design a battery bank. Yeah, I bet you didn't even think about that. And sometimes even in the books they don't talk about the design of the battery bank. And I'm not talking about how to string them in parallel or series. No, this is about designing where they go in your house and how to store them. Now, this is our battery bank. Isn't this lovely? So I'm going to show you real quickly what we have underneath here. Taxidermy hides. <laughs> which are for decoration. But this is what we have. My husband took uh, plywood and built himself now a regular size box. Um, if you look at the box closely, there is a vent hole down here. And there is a vent hole up here. Really, really important to have vent holes when you're building your battery box. Now this is his little contraption. This actually has a fan, look at that, there is a button fan in there that he sticks down in here and this is, this is a pipe that actually leads to the outside, okay, so we got fresh air and I can already feel the air coming in and what you do is you just, he sticks that up in there and then there is a little switch down here, toggle switch. You hear that? Now when these batteries are charging up, they release hydrogen gas. And ooh, can we smell it. Now when we first designed our shelf, <laughs> our other battery bank with the shelf, we did not have a button fan. All we did was use this, this fresh air vent. And what we found was Mm, no, the gas was still building up in our shop area here. It was really, really dangerous. We had a friend come over and he smelt that, and we showed him. We said, "No, we've got an, we've got a, um, a vent hole that goes red right outside." And he's like, "No, you have to have more than just a vent hole." So when you are designing your battery box, you are going to have to th think about vent holes and buy yourself a button fan to draw out that hydrogen gas because hydrogen gas is very very dangerous so today we have full sun and we are actually look at that we're on float so those um, those batteries will start giving off gas 
and that's when that little button fan goes on and we leave it on all day our battery bank doesn't that look great it looks so much better than that shelf system and so much easier to access and to perform maintenance on um, we can simply open up this box and reach in and check our specific gravity we can reach in and um, check the water level very very easy so again when you are thinking about your design you can access them is really imperatively important I tell you people at home in the long run <laughs> please listen to story uh, this battery box is going to save you a lot the other thing is uh, we are inside our shop area and the batteries are arranged not just for ease of use uh, but they're arranged to maintain an even temperature distribution throughout the bank we want to avoid any any uneven exposure um, to heat sources any um, uh, 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 exposure to too much cold uh, batteries lose actually 25% of their capacity at a temperature. You are storing that battery bank box. You want to make sure that there are going to be no temperature extremes. And the other thing, um, I don't know if you guys can see that, but we do have a concrete floor. See, there's the floor. And even though we are inside of our shop area, and we don't have to really worry about temperatures extreme. We were still concerned with setting these really expensive batteries on the concrete floor. We did a little bit of research after the fact. We made the decision to build the battery box with a floor. Why? Because what we had read is the concrete floor can be cold. And even ours inside the house is a little bit on the cool side. It can affect the state of charge. And that was enough information for us because we really want these batteries to be long lasting. We want longevity in our battery bank because this is the heart of our system. Okay, back in the battery box. <laughs> One last thing I want to address because I'm showing you our battery bank inside this lovely uh, storage box. You may elect to do your battery bank outside in a shed. We know a lot of people off the grid here who have sheds for their battery bank storage and that's that's great but again you have to think about the temperature extremes we live where there is cold in fact today it's only like 24 degrees it's a little cold out there so you can design a box just like this but you're going to have to insulate it and you're going to have to make sure that there's plenty of air space when you do the insulation so make sure you look that up and do some research uh, the other thing is, if you live in a very hot area, 100 plus degrees, 90 degrees, that can actually deteriorate your batteries. Yeah, we don't think about heat having a bad effect on batteries, but it can too. So if you store them out in a shed, make sure it's a shaded area, and there is going to be a good airflow in that battery bank storage area. So just some real uh, key things to consider because... Like I said, there are like no resources out there for battery bank storage ideas. Look at you friends. I had a hard time even now trying to find some information on battery bank storage ideas. They're, they're just not out there. So hopefully Starry is giving you people at home some good ideas before you go off the grid. Because this is a big thing and it's a really overlooked area. Okay, that is all for today. God bless you. Thanks for coming along. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And I will be doing more solar videos, finally! <laughs> because winter is here, and it's going to be a long winter. So I'm having you friends come along with me so you can learn some more over the winter and get ready to go off the grid.